January 29th, Friday afternoon. Um, for this time of year, it's pretty nice out, 28 degrees, uh, no real wind. I'm gonna head out to Kirkonda Sportsman Club, which is our little 100 yard range um, that I'm local to and that I've been a member of the longest of all the ranges around here. Um, so it's a really nice little range to shoot, um, especially plinking and load development at because it's down in a pit so there's no wind so you get good results that way but uh, it's got a whole mess of metal targets from 25 to 100 yards for shooting the 22s and uh, I guess I like to shoot the military stuff at it so two primary objectives today um, biggest one is is I did some reloading for the M1 uh, M2 ball spec um, and I've loaded for that before but for whatever reason it's been a while and my dies weren't set um, so I had to go through the process of doing all the measuring to get the crimp right and the seating depth right and all that stuff and um, so I just figured I'd load up a box of 20 or so and do some um, velocity shoot it past the lab radar make sure my velocities are within spec for the m2 ball and then um, I can move forward from there as long as I know that I've got everything set up it makes things a lot faster so the other thing is I just figured I'd bring my um, my night force 1022 um, it's a limited edition uh, night force edition Ruger that um, they did a promotion on and when you bought the attacker or the beast I believe in 2017 or 18 they did a promotion where they had a limited number of these rifles and it's a really cool little rifle um, stainless steel threaded barrel upgraded trigger uh, it's got the black red and gray um, night force laminate stock on it and so it's just a really neat little rifle um, <clears throat> just gonna do a little plinking on that and maybe shoot shoot off the tripod a little bit just a little bit of trainer work so uh yeah should be a fun little day pretty low-key This is the stock um, M2 ball, um, 1956 Korean, I believe, KA head stamp. Whoa! Looks like you killed it. Yeah, it slam fired though. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Lifted that thing maybe a little bit and it slam fired, but usually you don't get that with the military primers. Hey, average of twenty-seven twenty-five. Let's start a new one.
2711, 2724, 2801, okay. Light strike. Thirty, so can't tell. So average of twenty seven forty, so we're right on right on as far as velocity goes. So now I'm going to rip. Just five. So these ones should all be as close as I'm going to get them as far as uh, crimped all the same and same overall length and all that stuff so seated once instead of seated and adjusted so this one will be a pretty accurate representation paper too which is really hard with this thing but So my velocity is good, and I'm happy about that. Standard deviation of 12.3, five shots, stream spread of 31. Uh, average 27.55, highest 27.74, lowest 27.42. So I'm really happy with that. That's going to be just as good as any factory stuff you're going to have and right in the range. So I'm happy with that. All right, uh, quick range day. Turns out the range is only open till 3 o'clock this time of year. Um, and I thought 4.30, um, so my bad. Uh, only had about an hour to shoot, but I got everything I needed to get done. So um, shot the M1 first, um, and I shot, just to get a benchmark, um, I shot some of the 1956 Twin City um, military surplus ammo that I have. Um, actually that's CMP stuff and I, uh, believe it or not, had a slam fire and I don't know what to attribute it, that to. I don't know that I've ever had a slam fire on military brass. Um, it was the first two shots of the day, first shot, and then it, it slam fired a second. Um, so I don't know if there's a little bit of crap stuck in there, um, or 
if I limp wristed it possibly, and it very might be that I didn't shoulder it properly and um, actually bump fired it. I don't know. I've never done that, but it's possible. So that was one of the things I was a little bit worried about with reloading because you're said to supposed to be a little bit cautious when you um, what kind of primers you use when you reload for the M2 or M1 Grand, the M2 ball. And um, because of slam fires, if you use two too soft of a primer um so i'm using the smbs and and with the hand loads i had no issues whatsoever um so with the military surplus i averaged 27 40 ish uh one was over 28 uh, not a great standard deviation um uh, not unexpected um with the hand loads though i was uh, i averaged 27.55 which i'm very happy with um standard deviation at 12.5 over 10 rounds which I'm more than happy with considering I'm I'm crimping. You know, I want to be in single digits with my hand loads with my ELR gun and stuff, but uh, with crimping and, and everything that goes with um, a gas gun and all that, <clears throat> I'm happy with that. Um, so it shot really good. I did shoot a group on paper at 100 yards with it, and I'll post a picture of that, but it was like a one-inch or a three-quarter inch four-shot group, and then I flew one of them, uh, but still about a two two and a half inch maybe group at max at 100 yards with shooting paper with uh m1 with open sights is really hard um at least i find it uh it's deceiving i should say you know the results were quite good um, but when you're doing it you don't have a whole lot of confidence shooting metal with it is a whole different deal you shoot plates you hit plates um so <clears throat> Um, and then I shot the 22 mostly off the tripod, shooting off a Manfrotto with, uh, it's an older Manfrotto, but shooting off the Manfrotto with, uh, a hog saddle on it and shooting 25, 50 and a hundred yards, mostly at 50 yards, uh, because of the red dot, it's really hard to even see those plates at a hundred yards, uh, with a no magnification red dot. <clears throat> but at 50 yards, it was fun. Did some double taps, did some moving around and, um, and just, I guess trigger work, learning how better to shoot a tripod. I haven't done it enough to call myself any sort of pro at it. So, um, <clears throat> fun. Um, the range closed up. I let the range officer shoot my M1 because uh, one of my favorite things to do is if you're talking to somebody at the range or whatever, um, seem like a decent person or whatever, let them shoot something cool that maybe they've never shot before. I, I don't know. He didn't say that. He hadn't shot an M1 in his life, but I don't think he had. <clears throat> and a uh, pretty neat experience for him to get to smack some targets with with that thing with, uh, you know, a 1953 M1 Grand, which is one of the most famous guns um, in American history for sure. So all in all, fun day um, and pretty successful day. Um, so we'll bring you a gun along again next time. We'll see you.